How about what's the best predictor? Uh, I'm sorry, I'll call a timeout. So we're now uh, going to switch gears and uh, talk about the specific condition of uh, osteochondritis desiccans. Uh, so with uh, OCD, start with a question. What's the best predictor of successful non-operative management of OCD? Uh, and this one does come up quite often, and that is uh, an open femoral physis. So a young patient with OCD, uh, particularly OCD of the uh, medial femoral condyle, actually has a good track record uh, with non-operative management. So that's a uh, critical question, critical point to, uh, to memorize. OCD is a lesion that affects both articular cartilage and bone. Uh, it's, not just a, uh, it's not just a lesion of the articular cartilage. Uh, and the posterolateral lateral aspect of the medial femoral condyle is the prime location. So most likely any question on OCD is either going to be this one, where is it located most of the time, posterolateral lateral aspect, medial femoral condyle, or the previous question, which is which patient's going to do best with non-operative management, and that's when there's an open femoral physis. So the pathoanatomic cascade of OCD progresses from the articular surface uh, down. So there's articular cartilage change. Then it starts to separate. Then it'll detach, uh, get a fluid level through the subchondral bone. And then you'll actually have the piece completely detach and perhaps become a loose body. So the juvenile form, because of that uh, uh, effect of an open physis, does have the best prognosis. And the best prognosis also happens to go with the ones that are in the most common location. So if you have a lesion in another location, the prognosis is less good for OCD. So a lateral femoral condyle or patellar lesion does not do as well. And finally, on the MRI, if you see a fluid level behind the lesion, again, not as good a prognosis. And the adults, uh, again, because they don't have an open physis, they are uh, less likely to do well with uh, any type of treatment. There is a uh, classification system that's out there. Realistically, I wouldn't waste any time on that. No one's going to ask you a question directly related to the classification. It's more about how do you deal with the treatment, uh, and we've gone over that already. Um, the symptoms, uh, as you'd expect, pain that's uh, activity uh, related, sometimes recurrent diffusion, sometimes mechanical symptoms once the piece breaks free. The typical uh, uh, eponym for the uh, specific test is the Wilson test. Um, and that, I wouldn't spend any time memorizing the, uh, the eponym. Plain radiograph, uh, the tunnel or notch view historically has been used to diagnose these. You can also use a PA uh, flexion weight bearing view in order to visualize these, uh, these lesions a little bit better. And then if there's suspicion about what's going on with the, uh, the OCD lesion itself, then MRI is certainly a useful uh, adjunct in your decision making. Get a better sense of the size of the lesion. You also get a better idea if there's a fluid level behind the uh, OCD uh, lesion itself. So here again, question that emphasizes who's going to do best with non-operative treatment, 10-year-old, atraumatic, open growth plates, uh, one by one lesion, and what's the treatment? Well, it's going to be, uh, this patient's going to do well because it's non-displaced, it's small, and it's in the right location, so they're going to do best with, for this lesion, again, non-displaced, no fluid line on the MRI, so they're going to do best with activity modification because of that open physis. So restricted weight-bearing works uh, great for the kids. And then uh, it'll also work in some of the uh, asymptomatic lesions in adults. Uh, sometimes adult lesions are found just as, a, uh, as an asymptomatic uh, lesion that's just found on a plain x-ray taken for another reason. Uh, occasionally, arthroscopy is useful in uh, OCD, particularly when uh, there's either continued pain after a period of non-operative management or it's clear that the OCD defect is about to uh, displace. And then subchondral drilling uh, alone is useful if it hasn't moved out of place and doesn't have a big fluid collection behind it. Uh, otherwise, you need to uh, fix the uh, lesion 
in some uh, some way, and there are a variety of different techniques for that. Again, I think in any kind of uh, testing situation at this point, it's unlikely that you're going to get tested on specifics of best treatment for OCD. So uh, finally, if the OCD uh, uh, piece itself breaks free, uh, then there are a variety of treatment options, and it basically switches to the same kind of algorithm you'd use for a full thickness articular cartilage defect. And we'll go into those uh, things uh, a little later. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.